Hello Lobos and Canvas learners. In this video, I'm actually going to show you something a little different. I'm going to show you how I use Canva, C-A-N-V-A, to create the buttons and banners that you see in my courses. So I'm here in my canva.com account. I'm already signed in. You can see my MJ icon over here. And I just use my Google account to sign in, but you're welcome to sign up. However, it is a free account. I have a free account. I don't have a paid account. So um, here I am anyway, Canva. Lots of different designs that you can do in Canva. You can make, they've got a lot of templates and different things like that. So if you wanted to use this beyond Canvas, you absolutely could. It's great for little flyers, little invitations, social media images, different things like that. Lots of different options. But let's go ahead and get into what we're here for, which is how we make buttons and banners. So you can use pre-made templates, which one of the ones that I like is, I do like email headers. They're 600 by 200 is the default size of an email header, which is a pretty good starting point. So if you want to do that for a banner, go ahead and just click directly on email header. And that will actually open up some different templates that you can use. So some of these designs may look familiar to you because we've actually used some of these designs. What we often do is we adjust the colors, maybe move some things around, um, kind of customize it a little bit because you can do that. And you'll notice here that they say free or they'll say they may have a dollar sign if they are not free. So I'm gonna kinda just, I like this one. This is one that I use quite a bit. I'm gonna click there and it's gonna pop it in. Now one of the things that I can do is I can come up here to this color wheel and I can adjust different colors. So I can click on this yellow and be like, well, I don't really like that yellow. I like my branded colors better. Or these blue dots and I want them to be navy dots so that it's on brand. And I can just kind of tweak this as much as I want. I can also come down here and say change all to all. And then that's going to make it so that I don't have to change everything one color at a time. Same thing with the yellow. The yellow is pretty close, so really I wouldn't have to change that if I didn't want to, but there we go. Just for consistency's sake. Alright, and then I can change these words because I don't want it to say congrats teammate. I also, maybe I don't want to keep these things together, so I can click here and I can see they're grouped. I can ungroup them. This will allow me to move the text around a little bit as I want. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to go ahead and change that to my brand colors. And I'm going to change this to the name, my page or course, because I'm using this as a, as a page template, I mean as a page banner. And then I'm actually going to just delete, delete this because I don't need it. And then I can come up here and I can adjust the font. If I don't like that particular font, I can stretch it out, I can make it larger, I can adjust it and move it around. I have a lot of different control options and then I can also change it so that it's not all caps. Anyway, you can just play around with it quite a bit until you kind of get it looking the way that you want it to look. Okay, so if I was happy with this, and you can see I'm, I'm not, I'm still kind of fidgeting around with it. And again, that design aspect is up to you. You can use a template as is, or you can start from scratch, which I'll show you next. So if I wanted, if I liked the way this looked, then I would be good to go. Or again, I can keep making different adjustments. Keep in mind that it needs to be readable. So if the script is too thick or too scrolled, it may not be readable for your viewers. So kind of keep that in mind as you're playing around with things. But you do have lots of options here. And you, you can control the sizing and the color and all that. Okay, so if I'm happy with the way this looks, then I can go ahead and download it. If I need another banner, I can go ahead right here and say add new page, or I can duplicate and copy this page. I'm just going to say add a new page though because I want to start with a blank one. Now, for a blank one, what I do often is I come over here to Elements, and then I will start with a shape, and I like to use these empty base shapes. 
and that helps me have like a border and I'm gonna change that because I want it to be gray all right and then I just kind of stretch this out I don't know why I did that anyway play with the dimensions some In this case, I'm using the box to make a border. And if I want it to be, you know, kind of fancy feeling, then maybe I'm going to do a second one. I'm going to do the same thing. And this time I'm going to make it navy. And it's kind of like a double double border now. Anyway, you get the idea. And just kind of play with it to make the design look the way that you want it to look. I can also use any of these other shapes or icons. Some of them are considered pro, and so you would not have access to them, but you can, you can figure that out. It'll tell you if it's free or um, paid or, or what. So I can add some different elements like dots. I can type in patterns that I'm looking for. Some of them are, are animated. So if I wanted something like that. And some things I cannot adjust color on so just keep that in mind like some things like this one in particular I can't change the color on that so that color is the way it will always look all right so then if I want to add text I come here and I have setting heading subheading and then body text but then I also have some pre-made uh, font stylized font so if I like the way some of these look I could click this it's gonna add it and then I can change this text and again I can ungroup if it's like okay yes but I don't need this and maybe I didn't even need this welcome okay and then if I need to I can regroup which is going to take a long time because it has all these little little hashtag guys right here hash mark whatever these little lines you get it then I can move things around missed a couple you get the idea be better than me though okay and if I was happy with this I don't know how I moved my box sorry about that if I was happy with this then again like I said I could come up here and download. If not, I can delete any of the elements that I want or I can delete the entire page. And then also you may want to change the name. It's going to default, especially if you do a template, it's going to default to whatever the template's called. Okay, and then I like to do Command S just to kind of force save. Do that again, Command S. Um, that way it'll, it'll kind of refresh the page and, and note that all my changes were saved. It should be saving automatically, but that doesn't hurt. All right, I can download. I generally don't worry. You have the different options here. You can send it to Google Classroom. You can send it to Twitter if you've connected your Twitter to your account. You can send it to Google Drive, Pinterest. You have a lot of different options. Usually I just download it as a PNG. But again, that's up to you. All right, so that is banners. And remember that this was a default 600 by 200 pixel. Oh, and just to show you the full steps, if I download it, and then it's going to say that it's preparing my design. And you can see that it downloaded right here. All right, so I'm going to close this. And now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to make buttons. All right. For buttons, we do use custom dimensions for buttons, and we use 197 by 197 pixels, pixels, 197 pixels by 197 pixels. That works out to be about 2 by 2 inches. 
but we prefer to work in pixels. It just, it's a little easier whenever you're trying to do this kind of design and resizing to work in pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and say create new design. And now I have this blank square. And again, there are some templates, but generally we don't work with templates when we're working with buttons. I like to come back over here into my elements, and then I can decide if I want my button to be a square or a circle or a diamond or whatever kind of shape I want. Sometimes we go out of the box and do some different shapes. For this, you will want to pull it so that it's touching the side of your white frame. Okay, so there's my background basically. And again, I can adjust these colors. I happen to work in branded colors, but that is totally up to you, whatever you'd like to do. So this is the actual the shape now that my button will be when I put it onto my home page. This white space will just be white space. All right, and so again, from here, I might have some images that I've uploaded, which you can do that, by the way. You can upload your own pictures right here on uploads. You can see upload an image or video. I haven't ever d uploaded a video, but I have uploaded my own images. Like I've got some Bitmojis. I have some things that I've gotten from Pixabay. Um, I have different icons. Like there's our three E's in a pod icon. Just different things that I've I've used throughout a lot of our district logos. So if I want something like that, then I go ahead and I can pop that in. And then I can adjust the transparency. And again, these are the same tools, whether I was making a banner or a button, just showing you some different options. So I could kind of make that transparent, or I can go ahead and have it be solid. And again, I can resize it. So if I wanted this just here, and then I wanted to add some text, I have those same options. I'm going to go ahead and say heading, and I'm going to put in the name of my button, just module one or unit one or your unit name, whatever it is here. And then again, this is where I can come in and adjust the font and make it look the way I want it to look. <sighs> you have a lot of different font options. And then you can adjust the size, move things around a little bit. And again, maybe I'm like, oh, now that I have my unit names there, I actually want this LE a little bit bigger. Um, it will give you some centering features and things like that so that you can kind of make sure it looks nice. It's going to default to a certain percentage of view. So if I want to see what it looks like at regular page view, this is essentially what it would look like at 100%. And again, I can now duplicate that. And if I wanted to, I can make small adjustments. So if I wanted my buttons to kind of have a, a different color scheme going on. And I should have done this before I did that. But. Okay. Um, I can continue to duplicate these and, you know, just change out the frame color. Anything, whoops, Command Z will let you undo any changes that you didn't intend to make. All right. So now I have these four buttons. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come over here to download, and it's a unit name, so this is really um, demo buttons. Unsave changes. I'm going to hit Command S just real quick to force my, my changes to save. And when I come here to download, it's going to let me ask if I want a transparent background. And some of these may be pro features. Again, I don't pay. Um, there was an upgrade for educators, so you can look in to see if that's still going on. I do not have a paid account though, um, but you can also select the pages. Like if I want all four of these, then I'm going to go ahead and say all pages. But if I only need, you know, buttons one and two, I can come up here and just select those buttons. When I say done and then download, it's actually going to compress them into a zip file. And that's going to save down here onto my desktop. I will need to unzip that before I'm able to import that content into my Canvas course. Also, it's going to just number them one, two, three, four. It's an extra step, but a best practice here would be to come in and rename them. That way, when you import them into your Canvas course, those, name will, those names will come over, which is better for your screen readers um, when you think in terms of accessibility versus 
button one doesn't convey any information to a student who may be on a screen reader versus if I rename this unit one name, whatever the name of my first unit is, then my students know that button is for unit one, module one. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. And again, I'm just right here in my finder, basically on my Mac, renaming these with just a simple um, double click. Okay, so those have been just saved into my downloads. Now I return back to my Canvas course. And remember, I have two options. I can import these files one at a time, or I can come over into files at the course level, and I can upload an entire folder. So there's those four buttons that I just made. And I've now imported them into my course. And after that, I would navigate back to my home page. I would click edit. And I would repeat the steps from the building a page with buttons and banners video and then the linking items to your module. So in that case, I hit the table. I make it the size that I want it to be. In this case, I want it to be a four by one. I adjust my table properties. This is just my own preference. I don't like a border and I like center alignment and I prefer auto width. Then I scroll up so that I have my options. I've already imported these into my course. It's going to search all the images I have in my course. Unit one pops it in. Click in the next box, repeat. Again, you guys have already seen these steps, but I just want to repeat them here one more time so you get the full effect. Unit two, repeat again, unit three, repeat one more time, unit four, and remember I did not import my banner, so if I need to change my banner out, I would come here, I would say upload image, and that's going to let me search my computer. I'm going to go back to my downloads folder and there's the banner. Submit. It is a little small, so I can resize it. I'm going to go to options and I'm going to say custom. And I'm going to adjust that to be 800, but in this case 267, which is fine. Okay. And then if I want to link these buttons to a module, I click on the button that I want, click on the link icon, choose course links and then pick the page or module that I want to link them to and then make sure that at the end of this I hit save or save and publish so that it's now an interactive page I used buttons I designed, a banner I designed using Canva all of this was for free and there you go there's a home page in Canvas with interactive buttons if you have any questions about how to design using Canva please feel free to reach out to any member of Digital Learning Services. We'd be happy to help answer your question. Thank you.